encourage you, give God praise for his holy word. Amen. Thank the Lord. Glory to God. All right, let's pray and we're going to get started. Amen to God. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you and we praise you. And we thank you, Father, for being the God over all flesh. My mouth shall speak praise of your name and let all flesh bless the Lord forever and ever. We thank you for being here under the canopy of your open heaven. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, it's an open heaven for us. This is a time of an open heaven for the true worshipers of God. And every prayer that we pray during this season that's in line with his will is going to be answered. It's going to be manifest. You believe that? Just slip a hand up to the Lord. Hallelujah. You believe that? Just believe it and receive it and just act upon it, walk in it, knowing that it's already all right. Father, we thank you that this word is going to go into the hearts of us and cause us to be changed, to be conformed to your word, your will, and your way. And Father, as I decrease, I believe your Holy Ghost is going to speak through me now to minister to these, your precious people, and they will leave here better than they came with greater revelation knowledge and a greater mandate to serve you in Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. amen. And thank God. Put those hands together one more time. Amen. And thank God. Glory to God. I tell you, I'm so glad that the Lord said, let us go to truth and love and have church outside. <laughs> I'm glad that we're having church outside because we know that we're doing our part to socially distance, but at the same time, see, there's always an answer to everything. We're doing our part to socially distance, but we're still gathering together because the Bible said that don't let us forsake assembly. Amen? Amen? All right. In the book of Acts, chapter number one and verse number eight, I think I've given a few messages this year on this particular verse, and that just goes to show you there's just more meat on the bone. Amen? Somebody say, let's keep chewing. All right, let's keep chewing on this because this is some good stuff right here. Acts 1-8, you should know this by heart. Did, did, who was that? There was a prophet somewhere. Somebody, I'm trying to remember who that was. And somebody said that all great verses of the Bible begin with but. Who was that? Who was that? You did. Oh, who was that? Who was that? Who was that? Oh, was that me? That was it? that me? <laughs> Most of the great verses of the Bible begin with but. Isn't that something? But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Amen. See that? Seek the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, and his righteousness. All things be added unto you. But thanks be to God who's given us the victory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, this one begins with but too. But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, said the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, church. I want to teach today from the life building, life blessing, and here's the one, life changing message. This, is going, this message is going to change you in some way, shape, or form today. And it is entitled, based upon this verse of scripture, it is entitled, Empowered for Purpose. Empowered for Purpose. Jesus is speaking the last words that he spoke before he went to heaven. Now, you know that's important, right? I mean, the last words, somebody get ready. To, if somebody get ready to depart from you like, like death, whatever they say to you, those last words are very important. Amen? Amen? Jesus was getting ready to leave the building. He was getting ready to leave the earth. And he said, but, you know, they were asking him about how they could restore the kingdom to Israel, kind of like us. Jesus when, when, when is the kingdom going to come for, when is the justice going to come for black people? Jesus, you know, I mean, that's basically what they were saying. Jesus, when is justice going to come for us? And they were just talking about their people, just Jews. They weren't talking about other folk. And Jesus said, that's not for you to be concerned with right now. He said, but, somebody say, but. <laughs> we're so concerned about justice for just a group of people. And I don't mean that in a, in a negative way because there should be justice for black people. There should be justice for all people. But I'm trying to tell you until that day comes where we finally see it. Well, really, it's not going to be totally seen until Jesus comes. Jesus is trying to tell us, please focus on being empowered for purpose. In other words, even though the, the, the justice and the natural might not be here for us today, 
you can be empowered for purpose today. Say amen. amen. He says you can be empowered when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And he says that when that happens, he says you will be a witness unto me. Amen. Empowered for purpose. Today, we're talking about two important words, power and purpose. Both are P words. Somebody say power. Power. Say purpose. purpose. Now that word power there is the word dunamis, and it is miraculous power. It's supernatural power. It's power from above. He's saying that, yeah, there's some power in the earth. You know, some, some people got uh, economic power. Some people got, got political power. He said, but the kind of power I'm talking about is supernatural power. It, it can only come from God. It can't come from your own efforts. God has to put it on you. Somebody said, put it on me, Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He got to put He got to put some super on your natural. Back in the day, you know, I used to, I was one of them Afro sheen folk. You know, I had a natural, but then I needed a little sheen on the Afro. <laughs> See, you need some oil on your Afro. You need some, you need some super on your natural. Somebody <laughs> said, I need some super <laughs> on my natural. And God is the one who will put that power on you. It's called dunamis power it means miraculous power it means supernatural power and then god said he, he said it's gonna he was when jesus said this he was actually prophesying that the power was going to come on the church amen. and 10 days after he said this what happened amen. <sighs> amen. the power came on the church yes. and to show you that it was not just for the jews the power came on the church initially at jerusalem but then later at a place called what caesarea it came on the Gentiles. Yeah. So, and, and, and when they heard the Gentiles start speaking in tongues, they said, well, truly, the power is not just for us. On, Somebody yeah. say, the power is for me, too. The power is for me. Amen. Jew and Gentile who are in the Lord. You, you qualify when you have been born of the Spirit. You qualify to be filled with the Spirit after you have been what? Born of the Spirit. See, I qualify. Do you qualify? Praise God. You Listen, one infilling, many refillings. So you can be refilled today. Did you hear what I said? Yes. If you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, praise God for that. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues, other languages, praise God for that. But how many of you know that uh, it's kind of like in the, in the natural when they use that saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> if, you're not, if you're not flowing in it, you, it, 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 it can become stagnant. That's why Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift. In other words, you need to be you need to be praying in the Holy Ghost on a daily basis so that you can you can continue to recharge the battery because everything that is usable by God works by power. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look how everything everything like right now. I mean, they got the man got uh, got a little more advanced. Now you can say, you know, it used to be you have to have cords, but now everything everything is cordless, but somebody say still needs power. Uh-huh. Still needs power. You might you might have a cordless rechargeable thing. You might have a cordless mic. You might have a cordless, what do they call them, ear pods and all that stuff. But it still needs what? Power. And you are the ultimate device. You are the ultimate uh, 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 device in the hands of God. And you need power. So he's talking about this dunamis power. But then he says, power for what? Now, this is where it gets real good. Empowered for what? Empowered for purpose. When the Spirit gave me this title, Empowered for Purpose, it was interesting because he didn't say, he didn't say to me, teach from the subject empowered for your purpose. He said, teach from the subject empowered for purpose because I left it open so that you can understand that the purpose here is really not your purpose. It's his purpose. Now, now I'm going to make this clear today so you can really get this. When God empowered you, if you've been empowered by the Holy Spirit, it, it, and how did you get empowered by the Holy Spirit? You had, you had to, first of all, you had to be born of the Spirit. You had to be a proper candidate. You had to be saved. You had to be forgiven of your sins. And then, if nothing else, you, listen, all you have to do the same way you got uh, born of the Spirit is the same way you can get filled with the Spirit. You have to ask and believe you receive. Somebody say amen. 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 You ask. You ask to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And God will fill you with the Holy Spirit, with that dunamis power. Now, here's the thing. When he did this, he didn't empower you uh, for you to establish your kingdom. He empowered you for you to establish his kingdom. Amen. 
In other words, God has hooked you up so that you can promote his company. It's called the kingdom of God. And, and I said his company because it reminds me of a, of a company. Uh, anybody ever joined a, a, a company? Or, well, even if you, whether you work public sector or private sector, whether you work public sector, private sector, anybody in here uh, who is working for somebody else, public or private, raise your hand. If you work for someone else, okay, watch this. So you work for someone else. And when you go to that job and you get hired on that job, they're going to empower you. They're going to train you. That's the first thing that happens when you go to the job, right? Yeah. They're going to uh, uh, give you some uh, different devices to help you. I remember I used to work for prison fellowship. And as soon as I started working for prison fellowship, they were like, uh, here, here's your computer. I was like, I get a computer? They said, here, here's your cell phone. I said, I get a cell phone? Praise the Lord. And, and here, here's an here's a expense account. I get an expense account. Well, hey, praise the Lord. But they said, now, now this computer and this cell phone and this expense account, it, it, it's, it's empowering you. Amen. Amen. It's empowering you to, to promote, but not to promote yourself. To promote this organization. Is anybody hearing me today? Yeah. You are getting all these things that is empowering you, but it's empowering you that you might promote, establish, and advance the, the organization that empowered you. God, the kingdom of God, empowered you. God empowered you on behalf of his kingdom, but he didn't do it for you to establish your kingdom. He did it so you would help him establish his kingdom. Amen. And he said, wait a minute now. I thought, I thought that God had a purpose for me. And, and that, that, that I'm supposed to live out my purpose. Well, let me explain this to you. God, listen, okay, watch this now. So we're going to learn some stuff today. God has a plan and a purpose for you. And in that plan and in that purpose, God has given you talents and gifts. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. You, you know, uh, and then I'm going to explain talents and gifts in just a second. He's giving you talents and gifts. And then he's given you profession and vocations. Uh, some, some you could call professions, uh, and others you call vocations. Vocations usually work with their hands, and professions usually are more you know, white collar, and vocation is usually more blue collar. But all of these things, what God is basically saying to you is that, yes, I called you to do something. And what you do is based upon your talents and your gifts. But, but what you don't understand is while you find fulfillment and enjoyment in the exercise of those talents and gifts that I've given you, those abilities and skills that I've given you, the ultimate purpose of it is not for you. The ultimate purpose is twofold. And, and interestingly enough, I looked at this back, I, I had to kind of review back in the Bible last night, and it's all found in the same chapter. Ministers, where are my ministers of the gospel? Ministers on staff, ministers, ministers. It's all found in the same chapter. Isaiah chapter 43. It answers the question, why were you created? Why were you given the gifts you were given? Why were you given uh, the talents you were given? Why were you given the abilities and skills when you were given? Two reasons. Number one, God says, everyone that is named of my name, I have created them for my glory. Your whole life is to give glory to God. I don't care if you're a sweet street sweeper or, or a Picasso painter. If you're in the Lord, your life, your talents, your gifts, your abilities are to give glory to God. In other words, you didn't give them gifts to yourself. God gave them to you. Somebody say glory to God. Man, Andre Crouch had it right, didn't he? He said to God, come on somebody, talk to me today. Andre knew what he was talking about, and he was an example. That was a, that was a songwriting man. He was a songwriting brother, but, but he got it right. He said, to God be the glory. Your life is to give God the glory. It's, in other words, it really doesn't matter what your profession or vocation is. At the end of the day, it is God getting the glory out of it? At the end of the day, can somebody, at some point in your life, is, he said, what, read it again. But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you that you shall be witnesses unto me. Are you, is your life a witness that it's God who's doing this for you? 
Is your life, whether you're playing basketball or whether you're rapping, is, is somebody, can somebody witness that, oh, this person is, is blessed like this because God blessed them and they're giving God the praise and the glory. Are you hearing me today? Amen. The two words that are in Isaiah 43 is one is that you were created for God's glory. And the second one is you were created to be a witness unto God. To be a witness unto God. Your life is supposed to be a witness. That's why you've been empowered. Now, I told you I was going to explain the difference between gifts and talents. I told you that uh, uh, Andre Crouch was a perfect example of how God had gifted him. And he was using his gifts to God even in the song, To God Be the Glory. But here's the difference between gifts and talents. Somebody who's not, even if you're not born again, you have talents. Even if you're not born again, God has, God has blessed every person with a talent. Can you imagine that? Eight billion people in the world and everybody's got a talent. Say amen, somebody. Amen. I said everybody got a talent. Amen. I got a call from my mother-in-law this week. You know, my mother-in-law's good for this. She 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 stays, she's watching the TV. She's retired, so she's watching the TV all day long. As soon as she sees something, she'll, she got us on speed dial. And uh, I mean, she just calls it, what? What? I'm like, what's wrong? She said, turn the channel four. I was like, okay. I, I thought the house was on fire, something like that. She'd be trying to be talking. Turn the channel four right now. I said, what? Okay, okay, what? Let's go to channel four. So this little boy on there, and boy, he playing that piano, and he's got he's got uh, uh, one finger on one hand. He, on his left hand, he just has one finger, and he's playing the piano like this with the right hand, and he's playing the one with the left hand, and he's got one finger. He's a little black boy. He was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And I turned in, I caught just the tail end of it, and he was playing that thing like a concert pianist. Oh. One finger on the left hand, and, and, and the other hand, and he's just playing that thing, and it was a blessing because he was very talented. And Ellen said, you know, we're going to bless this young man, and he's been through all this stuff. We're going to give him $20,000. And I said, praise the Lord. Amen. God, give God some praise about that. Amen. Amen. Well, guess what? I don't know if he was saved or not, but he's, but, but see, he had as a talent. He has a talent. And everybody has some talent. It, you know, I don't know about you, but I, 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 I didn't used to watch this, but I do watch America's Got Talent. I do. I, I do. I watch it. I have seen some of the craziest things in my I you know if I watch America's Scott Talent. A G T. That is a crazy I said, look at this stuff. They had one man and he just put the swords down his throat. You know, he just put and asking the host to take him out. And then he had three down in there. And then he said, then he burped, you know, after they took him out. I was like, I said, man, that's a talent. That's a talent. But here's the difference between a talent and a gift. See before I got saved, I was a songwriter, all right? And I was writing songs, and sometimes the folk even remind me, I, it, speaking of my wife's family, I don't know why I'm on your family today, but anyway, yeah, my brother-in-law, Mark, Stephen's favorite friend, <laughs> Sugar Man, oh, he made me say that, Mark. Mark, Mark will forever try to remember, get me to remember the songs that I was doing before I got saved. Yeah, man, I remember when you wrote Love Out and I was like, <laughs> So before I got saved, I was a songwriter. And I was writing all these kind of songs, all right? And it went to, we don't need to get into the lyrics and none of that stuff. But then when I got saved, the talent became a gift. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all not hear what I'm talking about. See, after I got saved, the talent became a gift. In other words, that talent became a a consecrated gift to God. Now I only write for God. Give God Amen. some praise. Amen. See, so some of y'all thought I was crazy when I was talking about this rap song I'm getting ready to come out with. It's it's great. It's going to be great. But you know why? It's not because I never have written a rap song. But all of a sudden, God just dropped it in my spirit like that. And I said to myself, I said, God, why are you giving this to me? You know, I don't do rap and all that stuff. He said, because I want you to reach people with this song. He said, because I want you to use the gift that I gave you for my glory. And I said, I'm in. You, you, all you had to say is something. And guess what? When he told me that, I said, well, I wouldn't even know where to begin. And then he said, he said, you know, what, what did Janet say? Give me a beat. <laughs> he said, you, you begin with the beat. He said, so I said, well, I don't do rap beats. And then he began to walk me and show me the people that he wanted me to call. Call first person, 
one the right person. The second person, one the right person. I hope I'm helping somebody right now. Sometimes when God talks to you, listen to me very carefully. When God talks to you, you don't, you don't know exactly how it's all going to turn out. Like I like to say, faith walks out before it works out. So you have to you have to take that step. You have to take that first step of faith. And then that first step faith becomes step by step faith. Am I helping anybody today? In other words, the, the first person I talked to, I could find I found out that wasn't the right person. Then I went to the second person and I found out that wasn't the right person. So you know the devil tried to talk to you and say, that wasn't God. He ain't supposed to do this. And I said, Well, let me go to the third person. I went to the third person and guess what? That was the right person. And I said, I said, that this is the person I need to do this with. What am I trying to tell you? The gift is what you do unto God. You take that talent and you say, God, I want to use it. Let me give you a perfect example. Are you thinking I'm just talking about myself? Today we heard the song of prep right before I got ready to preach it. Who was it by and who was it from? It was from Nedra Cooper. Now, Nedra Cooper been singing all her life. I remember when she retired, she had a, a CD that she did. It was a nice CD. It was a nice CD. And she had songs on there like Nedra Likes to Sing. You know, Barbara Streisand songs, The Way We Were, Memories, da, 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 da. You know, all that kind of stuff. But but guess what? See, it almost made me fall off. But, but the point is, it was nice, but it but it wasn't, it wasn't a gift to God. Now she's singing gospel. And I'm telling you, she said, God, this is a gift unto you. And God said, well, I'm going to put all my anointing on it. It is going to be beautiful. And I'm telling you, that CD is just anointed. Everything. And, and, and watch this. Not only did God anoint her voice, but then he, he hooked her up with all the right people. You know, when I was talking with Sylvia, Sylvia was telling me because, oh, by the way, we got a song in the hopper with Sylvia right now. God put another song in my spirit and said, go to Sylvia and get it done. And, and Sylvia told me, she said, she said, Walter, she said, you know what? She said, God sent me this engineer who is top notch. She said, there's no way that I would have get, gotten to know him. He's worked with all the biggies in the business. Once again, God touched his heart. See, he could be doing this for money, but he's doing this for God now. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's worked with all the big people. Nedra, what you got is not only God's anointing, but you got the favor of God to give you a Sylvia studio, a good studio at a good price. But wait a minute, it didn't stop there. You got a, a, an engineer who is a top-rate engineer, and he's doing that as a favor, as a gift to God. And the sound sounds like it's, it's done in any top studio. Give God some praise. Now, that's, that's a gift to God. That's a gift to God. Some of you, hallelujah, some of you, you have organizational skills. You're good with the internet. You're good with uh, social media. That's great. You got skills and you got talents. But when you get it in your heart to start using that for God, now you're going to be operating in gifts. And now God is going to bless you beyond anything that you can imagine. See, when Jesus was preaching, he said this. He said, you can't serve two masters. He said, you'll love one and hate the other. You'll hold on to one and you uh, uh, let go of the other. And notice after that, he said in, in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, he said, you can't serve God and mammon. Why did he say that? Come on now. Why did he say you can't serve God and mammon? Why did he just say you can't serve God and the devil? Because we know that it's one of the two, right? But he didn't say that. He said you can't serve God and mammon. What's mammon? What's mammon? Money. money. And what did Jesus say about money? He didn't say that money was the root of all evil. He said what? The love of money. He said, so either you're going to watch this now, either you're going to love God, and that's going to be the motivation for your life, or you're going to love what? Money. money. That's it. There it is right there. There it is right there. That's, that, that's, the, that's the fork in the road for every human being right there. What is motivating you? Is it the love of money or is it the love of God? If, you, if the love of God is motivating you, it doesn't mean you can't make any money. It means you can make money, but the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and add no sorrow. In other words, you, 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 you make money, but you'll be able to sleep good at night. You'll make money, 
but you'll still get into heaven. You'll make money, but you won't have any regrets. In other words, the, the love of God is what's motivating you. But, but most of the world is motivated by the love of money. Yeah. They just, they'll, they'll make money. You know, it's like this thing I was watching on TV last night. And the guy, it was fictional, but it was still making a good point. The guy said to the man, he said, now look, he said, uh, you kind of remind me of Jesus in the wilderness. Because, you know, the devil came to Jesus just like that. He said, what did he tell Jesus? He said, if you will bow down and worship me, yeah. I'll give you what? Right. I'll give you everything in the world. Mm -hmm. All the power and all the money, all the women, men, whoever you, which you, who, whosoever you want, <laughs> whichever way you, whatever way you, whatever way your branch, you know, flows in the wind. He said, I'll give it all to you. Whatever your flesh can desire, I'll give it to you. But if you sell your soul, talk to me, church. Come on now. And, and Jesus said, no. He said, the, 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 the word says, the Lord, only worship the Lord thy God. Well, like I told you in this thing I was watching, the man said to the man, he said, listen. Oh, it was so great. Camille, you'd love this. Because when they showed it, just in classic directorial mode, it was a picture of of the man this man was a head of a uh of a, a like a secret power group that you know because you know the folk that really yeah. you know the folk that really run the stuff is just a few people they ain't the president you know it's the folk that the power behind the throne so here's this man and he's a part of this secret uh uh, 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 uh group and they run everything now watch this and he's talking to a man and he's saying now what we do is very important we just make sure that the world is the way it's supposed to be, no matter. We get done what has to get done by any means necessary. And then he said, now, he's talking to the man, but you can't see who he's talking to. So then he says, he says, now, um, he's pouring him a drink. And he said, now, we're just so glad that you could join us today. He said, you wanted a seat at the table. See, that's it's like all of us talking about. That's like I, that. That's just right out of headline today. Give me a we we want a seat at the table. Yeah, at what cost? Come on now. Do you really want a seat at that table? What table do you want to see that? He said we want. He said you wanted a last watch this down. He said you wanted a seat at the table. He said, and he said it's just you know unfortunate that in order to have a seat here, you have to betray one of your friends, mm -hmm. and then they. In classic directorial mode, they pulled out so that you could see who was at the end of the hand in the glass, and then you saw who it was and said, not him. I was like this, not him. Oh, no, he's going to betray my man. See what I'm saying? What I'm saying is if, if, it, if this is the cost for your success, what profit a man? Come on now. If he what? If he gained the whole world and lose his soul. So here's what I'm saying. God has empowered you, but he hasn't empowered you just for you. He's actually empowered you for two reasons. Watch this. He's empowered you for him. And, and watch this. He's empowered you for others. Yes. Isn't that interesting? Yes. He's empowered you to give him the glory. And he's empowered you so that you could be a witness for somebody else. What do you mean a witness for somebody else? so that he can use you to get them into heaven. Because God needs a body. He needs a witness. Now, now one of the things I have to give credit to, Jehovah's Witnesses, I, they, they got it right on that. God needs a witness. Say amen. amen. I said he needs a witness, and that's the problem with the church. The church don't want to be a witness. They don't. I, I heard the apostle, my apostle gave a story. Uh, he was reminding us, and I got to give apostle He'll credit on this. It was a good, we have our fellowship every week, and it was a good reminder. He reminded us this week about, y'all know the story about the four lepers? Yeah. Who knows? Who doesn't know the story about the four lepers? Don't lie. Raise your hand. If you don't know the story about the four lepers, praise the Lord. See, I need to know you don't know. So there was a famine in the land in Samaria, and, they, and everybody was going to die because the enemy had surrounded, as, as his classic military strategy, whenever you're trying to defeat an enemy, what you do is you cut off supply lines. So no food coming in, no food going out. No water coming in, no water coming out. And what do they do? They just wait you out. Yeah. If you, it, it, it seems good if you're in a fortress, but if you got no supplies coming in, come on, it's a waiting game. It's only a matter of time for everybody's dead. Can I get an amen? Yeah. So this is what was going on in the Bible. 
It was a classic situation and everybody was starving. And everybody said, oh God, we all gonna die. Now, there were these four lepers and they were outside of the city gates. Well, why were they outside the city gates, Brother Richard? Because they were lepers. And, and, just, like, and just like today, uh, you talk, that was the hey, that was the ultimate social distancing. It's like these see see there's always been diseases. Don't think that don't think COVID and Corona is the first disease. There's always been diseases. Now, that day was leprosy. So the lepers had leprosy and nobody wanted to be around them. So they had to stay outside the city even though they were part of the people, right? So then the lepers were like, Well, this is messed up. We can't go in the city with our own people. And if we go this way, that's the enemy who has cut off the supply lines. Well, what we, darn if we do, darn if we don't, what are we gonna do? We gonna die. And they said, we gonna die, oh Lord. Somebody say, hey, I know what you feel sometimes. <laughs> and, and, and then one person said, the wise leper, he said, what, should we just sit here and die? Somebody said, should I just sit here and die? No stand up and move out in faith. He said, well, if we go into the city, they don't have any food. They're gonna, we're gonna die like the rest of them. If we stand out here, we're gonna die. He said, let's go back to the enemy's camp per adventure. Maybe they might have mercy on us and throw us a bone, all right? Maybe they'll capture us, maybe they'll give us some bread and water, but if we're gonna sit here, we're gonna die. In other words, let me just say this to you. When what you're doing is not working, it's time for you to change. I don't know who I just helped right then. I said, when what you're doing is not working, it's time for you to stand up and move out. Amen? You tried it. You know, there's a whole lot of Christians tried it their way. It's not working. Don't you sit there and just die. Get up and by faith move out because you may say, well, what, if I, what happens if I go to church and start praying and all this stuff and start reading the Bible? Well, guess what? What you're doing right now is not working, so what you got to lose? Watch out now. So they got up. Now listen to this. Remember what I said. Let me see if y'all heard what I said. Faith starts out before it what? Before it works out. Thank you. Say it again. Say faith starts out before it works out. In other words, you don't know how God's going to reward your steps of faith, but you got to take those steps anyway. God's not going to tell you all up front. It, it, first of all, if he told you all up front, uh, you couldn't handle it. Amen. If he t and secondly, if he told you all up front, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah. You wouldn't trust it. So you just got to walk by faith. So they started walking, and guess what the Lord did when they started walking to the enemy's camp? He multiplied the sound of their coming by thousands to make it sound like there were thousands of troops coming at the enemy's camp. Yeah. Somebody say, won't he do it? Come on, church. Give God some praise. Won't he do it? See? If he had told them that, they wouldn't have believed it. He said, now y'all start walking, and when you start walking, I'm going to multiply the sound of your uh, 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 steps. It's going to sound like a huge army. They would have been like, huh? I don't think so. He did. And guess what the enemy did? The enemy fled. They just fled. They said, oh, a big a multitude is coming against us. we got to get out of here. And we're going to flee. And they went and they fled. And guess what? They fled so fast. They were so afraid by the sound they heard. They fled and left all the stuff at the camp. Yeah. Amen. All, did somebody say all the, stuff. all the stuff. They left all the food. They left all the water. They left all the gold. They left all the silver. They left everything right there. Look at God. But here's the point of the story. The lepers get there and they're like, woo, we praise the Lord. Party. I said, now party. I said, now. I mean, they were having a party. They were eating some greens and cornbread and people have all the fried chicken and everything. They were eating good. And they got so stuffed on all this stuff, burping and everything. They, they, I mean, they were having a good time. <laughs> and one of them, probably the same one that had that, that had said, let's, let's not stay here and die, because that wise leper, guess what the wise leper said again? He said, this is not right. We can't stay here with all of this food, all of this food, and be this sumptuously fulfilled 
while our brothers now, now this, but this is poor. This is a message, man. This is a message, boy. Whoo, this is a message up in here. I'm getting this. I'm, I'm preaching to myself right now. Y'all just watching here. This is a message right here. Not only he said this is not right when all of our countrymen are back there starving. Oh, wait a minute. You mean the countrymen that wouldn't let us? That's right. Wouldn't let us in. That's right. The countrymen that made us stay outside the fort. He had, the, he had the wisdom to say, it's not right. We need to go and hook them up. Now, you know in the flesh, he should have been like, he should have been like, won't God do it? See? See how they treated us? Now they're getting back with that one. We got ours and the, damn the hell with them. See what I'm saying? Come on now. That's the, somebody said, that's the devil. That's the devil. Telling you to look with the Lord, how the Lord blessed us. No, no, that ain't the voice of God. The voice of God said, this is not right. Go back to the to the city, the fortified city, and tell everybody that you came across the food that they left the camp and came up through. Now y'all know what happened. They went on back there. He convinced them. They went on back there, and you know when they went there and told them there's food in the camp. They left the camp. You know what the people said? Mm -hmm. It's a trick. It's a trap. No way. They didn't believe him. Yeah, it's a hoax. <laughs> It's a hoax. They didn't believe them. But guess what? They were dying. They were starving. And eventually they said, well, we got to send a, a, a reconnaissance team out there to check it out. Just in case. Because we, nothing from nothing. It is what, no, okay. Anyway, but, 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 but let's get back to this thing. So, so they sent, they sent a team to check it out. And they found out that sure enough, they were right. All the food was there. And they finally sent a bigger team and they brought all the food back and everybody ate. What am I trying to tell you and what's the purpose of that story? The church is like those lepers with one exception. The lepers, at least somebody had enough wisdom and holiness to say, we sitting on all this stuff. We gotta, we gotta go tell somebody else so that they too can enjoy. And here we are, the church, we sitting on all, all this word, good teaching, we're saved, we're forgiven, uh, uh, m money's in our account, food's on our table, the Lord's blessing us. But who are you witnessing to? Who are you, have you gone back to help? Who are you trying to bring back into the kingdom? Is anybody hearing me today? Don't be like that voice of Satan and say, well, I, listen, it's me, my four, and no more. I got, we got what we need. I don't know about nobody else. Hey, whatever they do, that's on them. No, 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 no. Even the people that treated you wrong. Go back and tell them about the love and the abundant life of God. And whatever they do with that good news, now it's on them. Give God some praise. Now it's on them. Now it's on there. Church, I just want to close with this. We have been empowered for purpose. What is that purpose? The purpose is not your talents. The purpose is not your profession. Your profession may change several times within your life. The purpose is your witness and your works. You have been empowered to do works for God. You have been empowered to be a witness for God. That's why he has, listen, you don't realize it, but you got supernatural power. You know, one of the things I've been doing since, since I got a grandson, my grandson, you know, we have to, he, he, okay, there's such an age gap that when he wants to sit down and watch things with me, there's stuff that's on his level and there's stuff that's on my level. And, and I had to figure it out because he wants to spend time with me. So I said, okay, we're going we're gonna to find the truth in the middle. I'm going to find out something that he can watch and something that I can watch and we're going to watch. So, so what I realized is that the thing that he likes and the thing that I like, but we can find the, the difference and split in the middle is uh, superheroes. Superheroes. So if it's something that's superhero, it doesn't have to be a cartoon, but he'll watch it and I'll watch it. And what I've been finding out about superheroes is that there, there, there's, there's, uh, there's two things that happen. There's always a story about how they got their power. They got their power in different ways. But here's the key thing that I have noticed, that once a superhero, this is true in all superheroes, once they get their power, whether they got bit by a spider, whether they got uh, hit by uh, uh, lightning, like the flash, whatever the situation is, once they got their power, there's always a point where they have to learn how to use it. They get their power, but they got this power, but it's power that they don't know yet how to use. But I'm here to tell you that when you start fooling around with it, when you
you start trying to trying to you know check it out and try it out, when you start trying to just pass a track to somebody, when you just pray a little bit, and when you talk to somebody, you exercise that power and you get better at that power. See, Spider Man didn't start out just swinging like he swings. He didn't start out flipping like he flipped. He you know he hit a couple of walls and things like that. What I'm trying to tell you, well, Pastor, I don't know how to witness nobody. Well, guess what? Keep on practicing. You're gonna get better. Amen. I mean, keep keep practicing. You have some power that you need to learn how to use. And here's what the scripture says in Mark chapter 16, verse 17. He says, he said, this is what Jesus said. He said, in the name of Jesus, meaning in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. He says, I've given you the power in my name. Guess what the number one purpose is? He said to cast out devils. Church, you need to know that you got power to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. You'll be talking about, oh, there's some stuff going on in my house. Is this bad going on? You, in the name of Jesus, devil, you got to go. It's not just the, it's not just natural problems you're going on. There is spiritual warfare going on at your job. There is spiritual warfare going on in your house. And you, in the name of Jesus, you got the power to cast out the devil. Say, amen somebody he said in the name of jesus you shall cast out devils he said you shall speak in new tongue sit up there tomorrow oh, i'm afraid to speak in new tongue i don't well, you you just silly then you just did not need to be talking about you afraid to do it by faith in jesus name he said you have the power to he said you have the power to speak in new tongue why is it important for you to speak in new tongue it don't make no sense bats can't nobody understand me if you read the Bible, it says when you speak in new tongues, you're not speaking to them, you're speaking to God. When you speak in new tongues, you're not edifying people, you're edifying yourself. You're building yourself up on your most holy faith when you're speaking in tongues. You want to do that to build up your power source. That's your battery recharger. Yeah, that bro, Sunday. The more you speak in tongues, the more you charge in that battery. And honey, as much as you use it, you gonna need it. Amen. He said you have power to cast out devils. You have power to speak in new tongues. Now here's the one I really like. He said, and if you take up any serpent, he said, uh, 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 it, or if you drink any poison thing, it shall not hurt you. I have read that so many times, but it has never become more clear to me than this week. Do you know that there are some people that will read the Bible and they'll misinterpret the Bible and it's, it's, it's so foolish? Have you ever seen on TV where somebody read that verse of scripture, Minister Ken, and they started a whole church based on taking up uh, snakes and letting yeah. them bite them? Right. Yeah. That is not what that's talking about. It is not talking about to pick up the snake uh, in the name of Jesus' ministry. That is not what it's talking about. It is talking about the fact that if you just happen to be walking through the woods one day, walking home or something, and a snake bites you, he said, in the name of Jesus. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't go to the hospital and everything else, but he said, in the name of Jesus, you're going to prevail over that. Amen. Paul was on the island of Malta, and a snake bit him, and, and it, it should have, and the people who were the natives there, they, they knew that was a poisonous snake. They said, he gone. Right. <laughs> they said, what did the Lord say? The Lord said, he gone. They said, they thought he was gone, but he did not die. Why? Because he had power over that poisonous venom. And then he said, if you drink anything poisonous, he said, it shall not prevail over you. I don't know if you realize this, but you have power. If they did a study. They said that they, they, they looked at uh, all the Walmarts and all the places. They said, every time you touch one of them carts and stuff, there's, there's viruses and stuff. But I'm here to tell you, I got power over that. I don't know how many times I drunk some stuff that should have took me out, but I'm still here in the name of Jesus. You don't know what you've been drinking. You, you really don't. That's why you pray over your food. That's why you operate in the power because you don't know. You can't. You're not. Everybody's not walking around with a microscope looking and saying, where are the bacteria on this? Wait a minute. Oh, no, I'm not drinking this. I'm not drinking that. It's the bacteria and all this stuff. But he said, if you, if you drink any poisonous thing, it shall not hurt you. Now you know why you're sitting here live today. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. And then one of the last things he talked about, he talked about in the name of Jesus, you will have power to lay hands on the sick Come on now. and the sick shall recover. Good God Almighty. Wait a minute. I said you, you turn to your name, say you. you. Turn to your name and say you. you. You, if you are a part of the body of Christ, you have the power to lay hands on sick people and the sick shall recover. 
What did I tell you earlier? I said when all of them folk, when all them superheroes got that power, they didn't know what to do with it. Honey, but when you get used to laying hands on the sick, you be Ashandaba in the and you command that body to be healed. I'm standing here today in the name of Jesus because of the power of Jesus to heal. Do you hear me? I mean, if you'd seen me a week ago, you'd have been seeing me. You know, my leg was hurt, my hip was hurt, but I'm here tonight. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Give God some praise with me up in here. Come on, church. Don't play me. I'm telling you. And listen, I lay hands on myself, and then if, if, if my mom and, and, and my wife and mama not around, then I mean, if they're around, then I get them to lay hands on me. But if they're not around, I will lay hands on myself. I will claim the blood of Jesus. I will plead the blood of Jesus. I will claim the power. He has the power to heal. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus and then of course the last one the last one he said he said he said you've received this power to be a witness unto me and our first witness is our walk and our second witness is our talk you have the power to be a witness unto me in other words this power is not for you to 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 to, to be rich and famous per se this power is for you yes Jesus was famous he was famous for being filled with love and holiness and miraculous power and miraculous power. I, I was reading a scripture last night where Jesus said, he said, for this purpose, somebody say purpose. purpose. Mark chapter one, Luke chapter four, Luke four thirty four. He said, for this purpose I have come. So what was the purpose? He said, to preach the gospel. He said, I need to go to other cities. For this purpose I have come. Church, how are you gonna be the body of Christ and not have the same purpose as Jesus? You have been empowered to be just like Jesus. For this purpose, you're here on the earth to, to let somebody else know about the love of God. Amen? Amen. He, I mean, that's, that's the, like he said, that's our reasonable service. So what am I telling you? What's your purpose? Your purpose here is to cast out demons. Your purpose here is to lay hands on the sick. Your purpose here is to, to be able to repel poisonous attacks against you so that you can survive and continue the work of the Lord. Your purpose here is to spread that love, to spread that gospel to somebody because if you don't do it, who will? If you, if you're, not, listen, if the body of Christ is not spreading the love of God, then who will? You, what they say, you can only give what you have. You can only share what you know. You only write what you know about. I was reading something the other day, and it said, uh, uh, even people that have never experienced, you'll like this, Camille, even people that have never experienced a certain thing, the rule is still the same. You only write what you know. You write what you know. We well, said, well, how about I write what I know? I've never experienced that. You research it well enough to know it. You, can, you only write what you know. You only share what you know. And how can the world share the love of God if they don't know the love of God? Right. You know the love of God. That means you're qualified to share the love of God with somebody. God needs a body. God needs a witness. God, and if he has a witness who will do his work, guess what God's going to get? He's going to get the glory. And I have a question for you. Does he deserve it? Give him the glory. Give him the glory. He deserves it. He, give him the glory. Stand your feet. Give God the glory. Come on. Come on, somebody. Stand your feet and give God the glory. Ain't too much virus going around for you not to give God the glory. Stand your feet and give him the glory. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus, son of the highest. He came from heaven to earth to save us. His name is Jesus. His name is above every name. His name is above every name. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Give him praise one more time. If the church doesn't give him praise, who will? If his people don't give him praise, who will? If his children don't give him praise, who will? We have to praise him. We have to spread his name. We have to let people know that he is the way and he is the answer. Everybody run around here talking about, well, what's the answer? I got news for you. His name is Jesus, son of the highest. He came from heaven to earth to save us. His name is Jesus, son of the highest. He came from heaven and earth all the way, yo, just to save us. That's who we're talking about. He is the one. Because guess what? They can come up with a vaccine. That doesn't mean it's not going to be another uh, virus somewhere. But, he, but Jesus... He is the answer. You can get all the money in the world and still have no peace. Come on now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You get all the fame and still have no peace. But the, 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 look, last time I looked, all these folk, all these folk that got the, the fame and the money and all this stuff, they have no peace. On, they don't have any peace. You know they got no peace. They're working on a fifth and sixth marriage. 
You know they ain't got no peace. They're in and out of rehab. Come on, somebody. Let, don't blame me. Tell them, let's tell the truth and shame the devil. Come on now. But guess what? In the midst of this storm, I don't know about you, but I can say unequivocally, unequivocally, and assuredly, I have peace. I said I have peace. I don't know if anybody else can say that with me up in here. I said in the midst of this storm, I have peace. And not only that, I have joy. Joy unspeakable. I'm, I'm happy. I said I'm happy. I'm joyful. I love everybody. And I'm thanking God I got the victory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like the man said this morning on the way to church, Pastor Joe said this morning on the way to church, all this stuff that's going on, praise God. I got to quote him on this one. He said it's just fertilizer. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. It might stink right now, but guess what? It's producing some fruit in you. Good God Almighty. It, 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 it might smell stinky right now, but it's necessary. Come on, Sister Arlanda. It's necessary. It's all it's doing is just causing us to grow up and go up to where we're supposed to go. Can I get an amen? amen. Praise amen. God. Father, we just thank you. Bless you and praise you. We never want to end our broadcast without making sure that everybody, under the sound of my voice, whether they're offline or online, has a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we never want to take it for granted. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell this little story shortly in the context of salvation. I got a call from a friend, a buddy of mine. He lives in Florida. We went to college together. And he told me, he said, hey, man, I just talked with one of our college buddies. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, I talked with him. And he said, he, uh, he said, you want his number? He said, I said, you know I want his number. Y'all give me his number. I called the college buddy. And make a long story short, uh, I led him to the Lord over the phone. Lord. Hallelujah. And after I led him to the Lord, the Spirit revealed to me. He said, do you know how long it has been since you talked to him? And I said, uh, wow. He said, it has been over 40 years since you have talked to him. 40, he said, it's been 44 years since you talked to that man. 44 mm. years. And you let him talk. And he must have talked to you for about 40 minutes. And he just kept talking and talking and talking. You let him say everything he wanted to say. But at the end of that, he said, you asked him one question. Are you saved? And he said, well, I, I, you know, I grew up at this church. I grew up at that church. And I was baptized when I was 11. And I said, but you didn't answer my question. I said, are you saved? And he paused. And I said, you can be. I said, let me lead you in this prayer of salvation. And he prayed the prayer of salvation. And the Lord gave me a prophetic utterance over his life. He's not married. He has no children. But he has a, a dream, a vision that God gave him, an adventure. And he said, I just want that thing to be done before I leave this earth. He says, I just keep hearing that. I keep hearing that. I said, now that you've given your life to the Lord, yes, God's going to make it come to pass. Give God some praise. Praise God. Praise God's going to do it. He's going to take that talent. Now that you've given your life to him, he's going to use it as a gift to him that you would say, God did this for me. God allowed me to do this for man. First to God, then to man. If you're not sure that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, like I said, it's not about having been to a church or even having a church membership. This is about a personal relationship that you know. The Bible says you can know. You can know. When you know that when you know the truth, it didn't say believe the truth. When you know the truth, the truth makes you free. You're free from all the fear that is gripping this world right now. The world is you know Jesus, you'll know that all well. It's all right, like I just said. It's all right because whether you're whether you live or whether you die, the Bible says we are the Lord's. Yes. To live is Christ. <laughs> to die is gain. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It doesn't. In other words, it doesn't matter what happens. I'm secure in Jesus. Pray with me. Y'all repeat with me to encourage whoever's on their broadcast listening right now or whoever's here who might not be saved. I see all familiar faces, but you never know. God, 
I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only born son. You birthed him in the earth without sin. He walked as a man without sin. He died on the cross to pay for our sins. And he rose from the dead to prove the payment was made in full. And he is Lord. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And I promise to love you and serve you forever. Now, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe in your heart, the Bible says, watch this, that you have passed from death to life. It's not about will you be saved one day. You are saved. In the name of Jesus, you are saved. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Congratulations. And send us a little shout out on the comment and say, I got saved. And give us your information, or email or something, so we can send you some information on how to be discipled. God bless you. God keep you. Here's my prayer. We love you. We bless the Lord for everybody. And uh, give God one more hand clap. Amen. Amen. Amen.